Okay, just a, just a quick glance. <laughs> it's really massive. <laughs> it's really massive. It's really massive. How big? Really? <laughs> and there's a tomcat out there. Uh, uh, two six two and a forty one one oh. Hey, you are my friend Ruben. We'll see you later. Mm, so big, so massive. I need a wide-angle camera to, to, to put it inside. Computer complexity. I mean, you can imagine the engineering and, and the manufacturing that put this engine together. It's incredible. There's that carburetor you just looked at. Um, the impeller blades there, that's uh, one of the uh, superchargers. Of course, that would compress the air and push it in through the engine. And then you had two large valves on each engine. Each engine has two spark plugs, so there's 26 cylinders, that's 58 spark plugs. So just the maintenance for the spark plugs, you know, can you imagine being the young airman being told, go change the spark plugs on number three engine. So this was the... <laughs> We want to compare that to a Boeing B-17 bomber, uh, which is 103 feet. So that is 10 foot wider than the main wing of a B-17 bomber. Uh, uh, and let your eyes drift up to the wing of the goose, how much bigger this thing is. So the tail is wider than, than the B-17. The wing, yeah, yeah. the horizontal stabilizer uh, is 10 feet wider than the main wider. wing of the B-17 bomber. Some of, nice. some of our charts even say like, taxiway closed aircraft with wingspans wider than 100 feet. Yes. <laughs> you can't even you get, get the, the, the tail. <laughs> okay, another thing I want to point out to you, if you look at the bottom of the wing, about two-thirds of the way down, there are four holes in the bottom of the wing. What are those holes uh, for? Uh, oh, I'm glad you asked, okay? <laughs> uh -huh. When they left the contract for this in 1942, uh, Germany had air superiority. And so, uh, if we're gonna fly this airplane, you can only fly it at 5,000 feet, but if you go up where these engines are happy operating at 20,000 feet, the air temperature is 30 to 40 degrees below zero. Your uh, oxygen is non-existent. So everybody on a 20 hour and 40 minute flight uh, would be dead either from hypoxia and or hypothermia. So you're gonna fly at 5,000 feet where people can breathe and where they have enough temperature mm -hmm. where they can live. Uh, and the uh, aircraft is typical cruise speed for your maximum range is 150 miles an hour. Oh, so we're flying an aircraft with wingspan of 320 feet, 5,000 feet above the surface of the water at 150 miles an hour. Every enemy aircraft in the area is going to have a turkey shoot. Yeah, yeah, okay? exactly. Yeah. So in order to avoid detection, they'll load up the aircraft and take off in the United States during the daytime, but they're going to plan to land at nighttime. Okay? Mm -hmm. But when you're going to land an airplane as the pilot, you need to know the wind and the sea conditions. Okay, you got to be able to see that. Yeah. Right? Mm. So when you open to the cockpit, have you been up there yet? Not yet. So when you open to the cockpit and you look at the pilot co pilot seat, halfway between the two of them is a control panel. A lot of them have little red uh, lights or orange lights to indicate fire and so on. But on the left hand corner of that panel are five toggle switches. And the five toggle switches is that you hit, when you get to your designated landing spot, the pilot will reach up and hit one of those toggle switches, and out from one of those holes, it'll pop a parachute flare. Oh. And as it okay. down, yeah. the pilot can just circle around so we can see if the wind and water mm -hmm. conditions are right. Uh, oh, cool. nice. That's romantic. Huh? It's spain, it's spain too. Romantic again. Mm -hmm. My wife may have been there. She's from Austria. She's traveling the world. She's okay. Swiss citizen right now. That's where her passport is. Wow. That's my dentist from here. He got his degree at the University of Nebraska, but he's from Brazil. Big dentist. Expensive. Brad. That helped? Official logbook. That helped? Chris, So, 30, 36 seconds, you said? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 25 feet. Says it right there. Okay. Smith signed it. Yeah, yeah. And it was less than a mile.
Yep. Yeah. 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 Going to the upper deck. So they generated their own power here. Mm -hmm. These are two big auxiliary power units. Each one is turned over by a small aircraft engine that's under the hood here. And if you can imagine the noise and the vibration just from these two items here. This one provides power down to a big electrical panel down below. And then this generator provides power to start all eight motors out on the wings. If you guys have any questions along the way, just shout them out here. This is the wing spar. This is the strength of the wing. It's easy to remember the footage. It's a football field plus the two end zones. 320 feet, tip to tip. 50 yard line is right about there. This is, this is looking yeah. down the right wing. Looking down. down. <laughs> really? Okay. Nice. But sensors, vibration sensors, um, or stress sensors that were wired throughout the airplane back to here. Then there were temperature sensors wired back to this test equipment. Nobody had anything turned on, so nothing got recorded. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> so they, they were seeing the, the data, but nothing was recorded? Nothing was recorded, oh. that's true. What? Radio operator sat here, flight engineer sat across the aisle here, pilot seat, co-pilot seat. If you want to sit up in the seats and have your pictures yeah. taken, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yes. Just ask, just not to flip switches and yeah, yeah, yeah. run the steering mechanism on. It's getting old like me. <laughs> <laughs> Can Ara, someone? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You put that hat on, you have to have it in. Okay. Hi, Howard. Oh. Hey. <laughs> yeah. We don't know if we should. Oh, no, I do Wow. Yeah. Okay. So there's a stick here. Bank trim and the down trim. I don't know, elevator. That's a mark. And the windscreen. So you can move the front by remove the throttles, eight the day throttles. Turn off everything and the instruments. Okay. Nice. The co-pilot yes. in the flight engineer yeah. station. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So yes, it's wooden. When you touch it, it's wooden. Is it like a plane off. Da miedo esto, eh. Okay, so there was a ladder. Let's see if we are. I'm not climbing, just taking the camera out of the ladder. See a hole. Nice. Section. 
side. And okay, now, okay. hang on just a second. Mm -hmm. um, so you might ask yourselves, why is there beach balls in here, right? <laughs> um, they actually found one of the original ones. These are just kind of like replacements. Uh, and the KTR, yeah, it's 19 original, 1947 original air in there. They found it in one of the bottom of the pontoons when they were doing the rest restoration across the street. Um, Wait, that's the same. Here it is. It's a float. It's really massive. This is the aileron. This is the flap, the wing, and, and you see. In the way they told, they told us that, 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 that the wingspan of the tail is, uh, is larger than a B7, you see it.